So moving on from that then, um, I've got a question here, which is less about you know, uh, fundraising um, or uh, Cambodia and that kind of thing. This is Merlin. What did you do for your PhD research? And from that until now, are you always working in your field of expertise or did you involve in different fields, working in different areas that were outside of what you knew from your <coughs> previous studies? I mean, that could take all day. I was going to say, I'm going to need some more tape here. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll do, I'll give, do give, give, give us the five minute version because I've got a question or two more. I began by studying gray bats. There was, I was just a teenager and there was a bat cave about a mile from my home. I bought a book on field guide animals, identified the bats, and my field guide said these bats lived in one cave year round, they didn't migrate. But the bats I saw came every spring and every fall and they weren't there at any other time of the year. I conclude that they must be migrating despite the fact that the book said they didn't. Now, don't ever be afraid to go talk to people. People who are very famous can be very happy to talk to you and help you. Don't be afraid to talk to experts. I convinced my mother to drive me hundreds of miles to visit the people at the Smithsonian Institution who wrote the book. And I took my notes and said, you know, I've watched this cave very carefully and here's what I've done. And here's a voucher specimen to show that I know which species I have. And they were so impressed that this teenage kid came in with all this information that they gave me thousands of bat bands and said, why don't you go back and ban some and see where they go. And I went back and banded some and got very lucky and found actually within a few months that they were migrating but going north instead of south in the fall. We'd always thought if they migrated they'd go south. So it was doubly interesting, which got caught, captivated me to be really excited about what I was doing. But in the end, those contacts that I made led to my first employment. It was the first people that I went to as a teenager and explained what I'd found at the Smithsonian who hired me for my first big job when I got out of college. Everybody is looking for really good people who are passionate, enthusiastic, and work hard and do well at what they do. My stepson is now in college and every now and then he says, oh, but I don't know what I'm going to do, you know, the jobs are over here. Uh, maybe I should become a biochemist or a medical doctor or whatever because that's where the jobs are. Jobs, the job market changes all the time. In the United States, when Sputnik went up, the Russians put a satellite up. Everybody started wanting to be space engineers. This was going to be the big employment of the future. Five years later, there, was a, there were so many space engineers, they were the most unemployed people in America. What people think is going to be the big job of the future is very likely not. What you have to do is plan around what you're passionate about. What really captivates your curiosity? What would you like to do if you had a permanent vacation? If somebody gave you a billion dollars and you could do anything you wanted to do, what would you do? That's what you want to do for a living. That's what I do. I have enormous satisfaction and fun traveling around the world, helping people like you, making good things happen. It's all fun to me. So I can work harder than anybody else because I'm having fun. And if you passionately do something that you, you know, you're just really curious about or you're, whatever it is, I've told my stepson, I don't care if he decides he wants to make skateboards for a living. If he's passionate about it, he'll probably be one of the top skateboard manufacturers in the country. And when he does that, he can donate liberally to conservation to help conservation. But just do things that really you can get really enthusiastic about. And you'll get even more enthusiastic if you know that the thing you want to do is helping people. And so you get praise and good I mean, look at all the good things people say about me because I do the things I do. 
but I'm, I'm selfish. I'm doing what I love to do. Neil, give me a chance to help you. You know, that's my attitude. Everybody feels good about knowing that they've really made something important happen. That's one of the most addictive feelings short of getting drug addicted in the world is feeling good. If you can give me an example from that lady who was talking about if you had one week to live. I yeah, I got it across. The president of a major, I believe it was Shell Oil Company, I heard her speak one time. This gal, one of the things she said was, think that you only have a, one week left to live in your life. You've been told you have terminal cancer and you're going to die in a week. She said, think about what you would think in that week. You've got one week to live. What are you going to think? About? Are you going to think, are you going to think, wow, I'm really happy because I made an extra million dollars? No. Am I really happy because I got a PhD degree? No. You know, what, what, what's going to really make you happy? If you know some human that is going to have a wonderful, better life because you helped them, or you saved a key environment that is going to live long after and for future generations benefit people, those are the things that you're most likely to think about and make you feel good even though you're going to die. And I can tell you from personal experience, I was laughingly telling Neil just yesterday, you know, I'm 74 years old. I figure I've only got maybe 15 more good years and I hope I've got that many. And I'm now in the last final race to find as many great things I can still do to be proud of before I have to die. And when I die, I'm going to feel like I got at least 15 lifetimes worth of good and happiness and I'm ready for it. If I die tomorrow doing what I'm doing, I'm okay. If all you've done is gone out there and made millions of dollars and ripped people off to do it, you're not going to feel very good about dying tomorrow. That help? <laughs> <laughs> it's worth thinking about, isn't it?